So good morning everybody. I am welcome here to the second day of our PhD defense marathon today. I hope today will be as nice, entertaining, interesting as yesterday and successful as yesterday. Um, so today we'll and this morning we'll hear Chris Young, he defends his PhD thesis, Chris worked on white barbie macaques in Morocco. And I guess he had the benefit of knowing the science and the species when he started because he worked in Morocco as a field assistant for another PhD uh, student at that time for a year already and habituated groups. But he also, of course, had the challenge of working at a site that's not like a continuously managed field site. It's also a site where Oliver and I are not as constantly or not as often present as Pukio. So he had to work extremely independently, he had to organize his team of assistants, find those, train them, habituate own groups, um, yeah, and had to, re had to rely much more on a long distance supervision while in the field. And also he did um, a great job in supervising many, many lab rotations, bachelor and also master projects very, very independently. And I'm very thankful for that, of course, <laughs> because that also helped me a lot. So I'm very happy to now hear Chris' results on his PhD project. Okay. Uh, thank you, Julia, for the introduction. And, yeah, first say thank you to the committee for all coming along today and to everyone else in the audience for turning up today. Um, so as Julia says, I would like to talk about cooperation and competition in male barbary macaques. Um, but firstly, I'll just briefly <coughs> explain uh, mammalian cooperation in mammals in general with a specific focus on males and how this may have evolved. So uh, for cooperation to evolve in animal societies, the benefits of cooperating must outweigh the costs. And several theories have been proposed to explain how cooperation has evolved in animal societies, including kin selection theory, uh, which proposes that individuals will um, cooperate with relatives in order to increase their inclusive fitness benefits, um, mutual benefits or mutualism, where individuals cooperate and increase the gain direct benefits from cooperating together, and reciprocity, where individuals trade the giving and receiving of cooperation over time. However, this is not an evolutionary stable strategy as um, due to the temporal function or the temporal um, context as giving as the individual that receives cooperation in the future uh, can decide to defect from cooperating with their partner afterwards. However, in group living situations, there are many partners with which individuals can choose and this can lead to uh, several different commodities that individuals can um, cooperate with and has led to the development of a biological market theory whereby individuals trade different, different or the same commodities um, over time with different individuals in the group and choosing the correct partners or choosing different partners to try to um, optimize your benefits from cooperating together becomes more important and individuals can cooperate using or select partners using mechanisms such as attitudinal partner choice whereby they um, they cooperate with uh, individuals based on previous, or choose partners based on previous experiences with those individuals in the group. Um, today I'll focus on males in general, so cooperation between, uh, well most males in mammalian species are of the dispersing sex, um, and are, therefore in group living situations they're often um, not kin or unable to recognize kin within their groups. Additionally males are competing for access to fertilized females and a fertilization of a female is a non-divisible resource. Therefore, cooperation between males would appear to be counterintuitive and somewhat surprising. However, cooperation between uh, males in mammal societies is abundant, including examples such as territory defense, predator protection, cooperative hunting, uh, the exchange of grooming, and defense of females. And here I'd like to build on this knowledge by examining um, further male cooperation by examining uh, within group coalition formation in Barbary macaques. And you can see in the picture here that we have an example of a coalition with two males um, here aggressing a third target male, the one with the baby on his back here. And for co um, these coalitions to form within groups, um, it, only, it should only occur at different levels of contest potential. And contest potential can be thought of as the level of competition over um, females. 
So if competition is, uh, if there are very few females, competition will be very high. And in situations where there are many females or many, many receptive females, competition uh, will be very low in groups and can lead to scramble competition where coalitions would no longer become effective um, reproductive strategy. So we can further classify coalitions into two types depending on the um, context in which they occur. These can be rank changing coalitions. Um, and if you look at the diagram here, you can see there's four, a representation of four male individuals uh, increasing in rank position up to A. And if males B and C were to form a rank changing coalition and increase their rank positions, they would climb up the hierarchy and individual A would drop in the hierarchy. Uh, alternatively, coalitions can be of a leveling type, and these occur with a direct sexual context. Um, you can see in the graph here again a representation of this. The black line here um, represents a reproductive uh, success of males depending on their rank position, um, and where no leveling coalitions would occur, the black line would show the general pattern of uh, mating success with the highest ranking males gaining the most mating success. And if males were to form coalitions together, um, to flatten the mating skew, you may see a pattern more like the dotted line here, where all males gain an equal distribution. But obviously this would be a very extreme example of leveling with a mating skew. <coughs> so much early work on coalitionary behavior occurred in uh, savannah baboon groups. And in these groups, um, the coalitions were thought to be very opportunistic in nature. And um, partner choice was mainly based on the rank position of the individuals involved. Um, in these baboon groups, males have very different, uh, very large power differentials, and high-ranking males can consort with females. Um, and mid-ranking males uh, utilize coalitions in the leveling function to try to um, combine fighting abilities with another male to break up a consort between the males, uh, between the high-ranking male and the female, and gain access to this female. Um, however, due to these large power differentials, the partner choice is very limited, um, as only certain males have the combined fighting abilities to defeat the high ranking or the alpha male. Um, more recently, there's been um, much research into um, <coughs> primate species with social bonds, and in these groups, um, males often form strong bonds together, and these individuals um, frequently <coughs> cooperate together through coalitionary um, aggression. And this can take place over a longer time period uh, between individuals and therefore require um, a more long-term partner. And social bonds may be thought of um, as a way to advertise a willingness to cooperate with a partner in the future. This has recently been seen in Assamese macaques and in chimpanzees. So in this study, I focus on um, wild male Barbary macaques um, from the Middle Atlas Mountains in Morocco. You can see a little red dot on the map here, which indicates roughly where our field site was. Um, and Barbary macaques provide an ideal study species to look at cooperation between males, as males frequently form coalitions together and are frequently known to affiliate together. Um, and one of the main aims of this study was to investigate um, if males use this affiliation to form social bonds together, or if this affiliation develops into social, strong social bonds between males, and if these bonds provide an adaptive function, such as um, partner choice and coalition formation. Um, so to conduct this research, I looked at two different groups of Barbary macaques with differing uh, numbers of males and collected over 2,000 hours of male focal data on both um, social and sexual behavior. So just to give a brief overview of um, my study and the talk today, um, the main aim of the study was to examine male cooperation by investigating um, mating competition, mating skew, and male social relationships, and how these are all influenced by coalitionary activity. And um, to do so, I looked at a complete chain of evidence leading to um, cooperation uh, between males. Firstly, trying, uh, the first study examining exactly what males can infer about female reproductive state to gain an uh, accurate estimate of female receptivity, which in turn leads to um, an empirical estimate of contest competition. Um, secondly, I looked at male mating success to try to uh, understand if males are utili utilizing leveling coalitions in order to either increase their own mating success or decrease the mating success of rivals. And thirdly, I examined male uh, social relationships to understand if males are firstly 
forming social bonds together, and if these social bonds provide a um, benefit for partner choice and coalition recruitment. And that's leading to a complete chain of events in male coalitionary behavior or male cooperation. So firstly, I'd like to talk about um, contest potential within the species and what males can infer about female reproductive state. So, um, and therefore to determine what males are competing over. So in many uh, mammalian and primate species, the extent to which males can infer information about female reproductive state varies greatly. Uh, for example, females can conceal ovulation to males, or um, females can extend their period of rece sexual receptivity to males um, over a period longer than the fertile phase when the female can be fertilized. And females may try to, or this may function to, uh, this extended receptivity may function to, um, allow females to mate with many males in a group setting, and therefore um, give many males a chance, a non-zero chance of paternity, and uh, create paternity confusion within the group and act to reduce future risks of infanticide for the females. Um, so this variation in uh, the information males can infer about female reproductive state calls for species-specific estimates of what males can understand, uh, yeah. species-specific estimates of male contest potential. So in Barbary macaques, there's been much previous research in free-ranging conditions in, towards mating behavior. Uh, we know previously that females do have these anogenital sexual swellings, as you can see in the picture here. And these swellings reach maximum size around the time of ovulation. And as, along with auditory cues and behavioral cues from females, can indicate to males when to concentrate mating activity. However, females in Barbary macaques and a few other species show these post-conception swellings during pregnancy. <coughs> and so far, in this species, there's been no... Um, examination of male mating behavior around these post-conception swellings and the information males can infer about these swellings. Um, so before we could have a true estimate of male contest potential, we needed to uh, fill in this final piece of the puzzle and understand what males can infer about these post-conception swellings. And to do this, we, the, well, the main aim of this study was to understand what well male barbary cats can ascertain about female reproductive state. And we collected hormonal uh, well, we assessed female fertility hormonally with uh, fecal samples and looked, collected behavioral data on male sexual behavior. So, firstly, we found that our results echoed those of um, free-ranging conditions and that males and um, females' ovulation occurred most frequently during the um, maximum swelling period. The black bars here indicate female maximum swelling periods and the gray box indicates the fertile phase or the period when ovulation can occur and the female can be fertilized. And males mated most frequently during these maximum swelling periods compared to periods outside of maximum swelling. However, as I say, they have, male, females have these post-conception swellings which occur 25 to 30 days after um, the females conceived. And these um, occurred in 80% of our study females. And we found, we looked at male mating rates during these periods, comparing the conception swelling periods with the post-conception swelling periods, and we found that there was um, no difference between male mating rates during conception and post-conception swelling periods, as you can uh, see the mean rates of behavior indicated here. So it seems that males cannot differentiate between different swelling periods and invest both time and energy equally in both um, swelling periods. And this can have consequences for contest potential. Um, as 80% of the females show these post-conception swellings, this effectively doubles the level of female receptivity within the group and um, can lead to a higher probability of females being receptive synchronously. And this in turn would lead to a reduction in the alpha male monopolization potential of females as he can only monopolize one female at any one time and therefore lead to a further reduction in contest potential within the species. And I think this highlights the need for species-specific estimates of contest potential, as if we hadn't investigated these um, post-conception swellings, we would have had a um, very different estimate of our contest within these groups. 
So now we, will, we know what males, or roughly know what males are competing for, or their contest potential. We'll examine male coalitionary behavior and how this affects mating success. In order to do so, I utilized the priority of access model, which was first designed by Stuart Altman in 1962. And this model predicts a male's mating success based on his rank position and the number of synchronously receptive females. So if all females are receptive separately, as you can see here, each box represents a female's receptive period, then the alpha male should have the greatest fighting abilities in the group and be able to monopolize access to these females. If, however, a second female were to become receptive simultaneously, then the alpha male is occupied with one female, or he can only be in one place at one time, and the second ranking male should be able to gain access to the second female. And if a third female were to become receptive synchronously, third, synchronously the third ranking male would gain access, and so on. However, these predictions are not often met in empirical data, as uh, lower ranking males and females have alternative mating strategies. Um, and it's been shown in previously in Barbary macaques and free ranging conditions that two factors um, affect mating skew in the species, or two additional factors, and these are female mate choice and male coalitionary aggression. And specifically in this study, we're interested in um, male coalitionary activity and, what male, and how this influences mating success. But we therefore have to control for female mate choice within this study, as it's been shown to greatly influence mating success. So the main aim of this study was to look at the factors which influence a male's daily mating success. And to do so, we examined mating success across three consecutive mating seasons. Um, and during female receptive periods, we, there were 233 coalitions, which occurred under a sexual context, or could be termed leveling coalitions. And we also, as I say, examined female behavior, and this was the number of approaches a male gave to, a female gave to a male, um, which were followed by sexual behavior, or as we termed it, the number of um, sexual encounters initiated by a female. So firstly, we'll examine male uh, mating skew, and you can see in the graph here on the x-axis is the pr proportion of copulations each uh, male rank position received, and this is a mean value over three mating seasons. And you can see that mating is skewed up the hierarchy with each male receiving a higher mating success than the male ranking directly below him. However, if we look at the expectations of the priority of access model, you can see that um, the first two ranking males mean gain much less mating than expected, and every other male gains much more than expected, particularly the, particularly the third and fourth ranked males. Um, so it seems that more than just male rank position and female receptive synchrony are um, driving mating skew within the group. Therefore, we investigated uh, <coughs> these four factors to examine, to look at which were influencing a, male, influencing a male's daily mating success. And firstly, we found that a male's rank position did influence mating success, and the higher ranking a male was on any given day, the greater his mating success. Secondly, the more synchronous females were, so the more females that were receptive on the same day, the greater a male's mating success was. And the more frequently females initiated sexual encounters with males, the greater their mating success. And finally, the more frequently a male uh, formed a coalition, so was an aggressor in a coalition, the greater their mating success. So we find that females mainly initiated uh, sexual encounters with mid-ranking males in our study, and that um, high and low-ranking males may be teaming up to form uh, coalitions against these successful mid-ranking males. Uh, as symbolized here, this is a, the higher ranking male and a lower ranking male teaming up against a dictation anyway, a mid-ranking, a successful mid-ranking rival in a bridging coalition. So coalitions may act to counteract the effects of female behavior. However, um, if males are, when males aggress these um, mid-ranking males with females, they don't necessarily gain direct access to the female um, but males can reduce the future mating opportunities of these mid-ranking males by um, breaking up their associations with the females while simultaneously increasing their own probability of mating um, by freeing up the female for the rest of the day. However, we know that uh, from the first graph that mating is skewed up the hierarchy. 
So it pays to try and reach as high a, a ranking position as possible. Um, so males may cooperate further through rank changing coalitions in order to try to increase their status to get um, as high mating success as possible, which should um, eventually lead to a higher reproductive success. So therefore we further examined uh, male social relationships and um, how males are selecting or recruiting partners for coalition formation. So two main uh, alternative theories currently exist as to how males select partners for um, coalitionary aggression. Firstly, males may base their partner choice decisions on the rank of individuals available uh, to try to optimize their chance of success of the coalition um, by selecting the highest ranking male, they should have the highest intrinsic fighting abilities and therefore be more likely to um, succeed in the coalition. So males may use simple rules of thumb such as always select the highest ranking male available. Alternatively, in species where males form social bonds, it may be that um, coalitionary aggression, especially in the case of rank changing coalitions, are very high risk behaviours, aggressing higher ranked targets and require a reliable partner um, in order to uh, firstly reduce the risk of um, defection during the coalition so that they or they would have an increased if their partner defected they would have an increased risk of injury and secondly um, in the case of rank changing coalitions if they do increase their rank position uh, they may need to further defend this increased rank position and still require a coalitionary partner to help them in the defense so the aim of the third study was to investigate male partner choice and um, see if this is driven by social bond strength between males or the rank of the uh, bystanders available when a recruitment event occurred. To do this we recorded, when a male coalition recruitment event occurred, we recorded all males that were within a 50 meter proximity of a recruitment event and recorded the male that was selected or recruited for coalition behavior. Uh, we work in a very open oak cedar forest, as you can see in this picture, and therefore we had high visibility and were able to uh, record all males within 50 meters on a regular basis. But before we can examine recruitment behavior, we first need to know if males are actually forming these social bonds together. To do so, I utilized the Composite Sociality Index, or CSI scores, first pioneered by Silk and colleagues, um, and these give dyadic scores to each member in a group, their social relationships, and individuals with a score of above the median of one are considered to have a strong social relationship, and those below one are considered to have a weak social relationship. And in total we found 39% of our group to have a, a strong, or dyads to have a strong <coughs> social relationship. Um, so we found males form differentiated, equitable, and stable social bonds over time, and these bonds um, were correlated for over two years and through three consecutive mating seasons, which may appear surprising as uh, during these mating seasons it's very intense competition between males and these bonds uh, may have been expected to break down. So now that we know that males do form social bonds together, we look at male coalition recruitment behavior and specifically to understand um, from the audience of bystanders available which male is being selected or recruited for coalition behavior whether this is the highest ranking male available or the male with the greatest social bond strength. And we found that um, the highest ranking male was not always selected and there was no significant effect of um, rank. However, the male with the strongest social bond was selected um, for coalitionary recruitment. Additionally, um, when these recruitment events occur, and the bystander male or the recruit the male who is the potential supporting male can either reject or accept the invitation of recruitment. And we further looked at these um, coalitionary events to try to understand um, why a male would reject a coalitionary recruitment. <coughs> and again we looked at the rank of the individuals involved and the social bond strength between the individuals involved and found that um, if the target male, the target of the coalition was higher ranking than the recruiting male the potential supporter was more likely to reject the coalition, uh, the recruitment invitation. And additionally, if the recruiting male had a low social bond or low social bond score with the um, target male, uh, sorry, with the potential supporter, then they were more likely to reject the invitation for recruitment. 
So it seems that social bond strength but not rank may predict um, a male's coalitionary recruitment or who a male recruits in a coalition. However, also males were more likely to reject coalitions if the target was, if, if the recruiting male was weakly bonded to them or the target male was higher ranked than the recruiting male. And this may be due to the fact that coalitions are high risk behaviours and require a reliable partner and an individual with a weak social bond um, may represent an individual in the group who is a, um, a less reliable partner and therefore during a coalition may defect and leave you in a very risky position against another individual. Additionally, a, high, a coalition against a high ranked target, a higher ranked target um, is even a more risky coalition and therefore a male may not want, um, wish to participate in a high risk um, cooperation. So social bond strengths may provide an adaptive, uh, social bonds may provide an adaptive benefit which can facilitate partner choice um, in coalition formation. Um, and males may base their partner choice on previous experiences within the group. Uh, previously it's been shown that uh, both chimpanzees and Assamese macaques form strong social bonds. And these males uh, frequently form, uh, the males who frequently form strong social bonds also form coalitions together. Uh, which is similar to what we have observed in our group. So overall, um, in these three studies, we've been able to show a complete chain of evidence leading to male cooperation um, in barbary macaques. And this may provide a template for future studies examining uh, male reproductive strategies, social relationships between males, and um, levels of cooperation within primate groups. So it's to summarize these three studies, um, firstly, they show a, or they highlight a need for species-specific estimates of the information males can infer about female reproductive state. Um, secondly, that males can utilize leveling coalitions in order to increase their mating success, whilst also reducing the mating success of rivals within the group. And that males can also use rank-changing coalitions to increase their rank position, which will lead to a, a long-term increase in reproductive success. And social bond strength between males may mediate this partner choice. Um, males may use mechanisms such as attitudinal partner choice, whereby they base their partner choice decisions on previous experiences with other group members um, to select their partners. So now I would like to just talk briefly about male cooperation in primate societies in general and how these results would fit into uh, what we know. So, uh, males who form coalitions together may cooperate by gaining mutual benefits um, through cooperation. Um, and therefore, partner choice or selecting the best partner available becomes more important. Um, within a group, there's a pool of partners with which an individual can select. And therefore, this reduces the opportunity for individuals to cheat as if they were to defect from cooperating there's a pool of other individuals which the um, other male may select from in the future. Uh, males may, be, may use um, base partner choice decisions on previous experiences with other individuals in the group using mechanisms such as attitudinal partner choice. And in species where social bonds um, are formed between males, this may show a willingness to form, social bond strength may show a willingness for males to cooperate together in the future and build trust between individuals, or reliability between individuals, um, and this may facilitate partner choice. Whereas in species where no bonds, um, or weak bonds exist between them, um, males, opportunistic coalitions may be more likely with a leveling function, um, as observed in baboon species, for example, or savanna baboon species. So, in summary, um, Leveling coalitions may be more abundant in uh, primate societies as these are often opportunistic in nature um, and their ultimate goal is to reduce others' um, immediate mating success. Um, these therefore provide a direct pay uh, payoff to individuals who are cooperating and this um, payoff may be random between the individuals as either one may gain access to the female after breaking up a consort with a male. And partner choice therefore may be more opportunistic and situation dependent and social bond strength between males may not be a prerequisite for 
leveling coalition formation. Whereas rank changing coalitions tend to um, involve repeated interactions in order for males to maintain their higher ranking position once it's been attained, and their ultimate goal is to increase um, reproductive success um, by increasing their rank position. Therefore, they have a longer term payoff, and this may be a delayed benefit and require rely, uh, reliable or long term partner over time. And social bonds between males may help to mediate this partner choice, as has been observed in Assamese macaques, in chimpanzees, and similar to what we observed in this study in Barbary macaques. So in summary, um, where male <coughs> affiliation and social bonds form between males, males can utilize different coalition types in order to um, gain both short-term benefits, increasing their direct mating success and reducing mating success of rivals, and long-term benefits of increasing their rank position, uh, which in the long term would increase their reproductive success. And with that, I would like to um, firstly thank Yulia Oliver and Bino for helping me through this PhD, and uh, for all the thesis committee for being here today, uh, funding agencies and yeah, many field assistants and lab people and friends here. And thank you for listening. Mm -hmm.